Hello everyone, my name is Human Peter Sajot and um, in this session uh, I will talk uh, about Android programming more from practical aspects and uh, I will demonstrate how to program an Android application using Android Studio and Android SDK uh, by showing by uh, showing and uh, uh, the source codes and going through the source codes uh, together. In this session, uh, I use Android Studio, which is the official um, ID for uh, developing Android applications, and uh, it, you can download it from its uh, website. Uh, that it comes actually with the uh, Android SDK. Uh, that provides you all the tools and uh, that are that you need for implementing, debugging, and testing uh, your uh, application. So I run it here. Um, so as you can see uh, here in Tools Android, you can find that uh, it comes with uh, interesting. Uh, uh, and uh, SDK and tools that uh, provides you, for example, AVD Manager, which is the Android Virtual Device Manager, uh, that actually enables you to uh, create virtual devices that are emulation of the real end devices. It includes TV, wearable, and different type of phones. For example, let's say I want to test my uh, application in an Nexus Five device so I actually create uh, an emulator of that device and you can actually run it and uh, it will run it in a real device which you can see here it's getting started So it actually takes, it's actually running the real operating system in an emulated hardware. So your application is in fact really running in this device so you can test it uh, in uh, how it behaves even without owning this uh, Nexus 5 device. To test and dig into your uh, device uh, you can actually use um, um, Android um, device uh, monitor which is a very useful tool to view uh, what's going on into your application and your device when your application is running so actually you can dig into the device uh, and uh, to see for example when your application running how it is using different application resources and uh, it helps you to get a to be able to see the logs and errors uh, from your application and to figure out how to improve your application as an example uh, in this session we will uh, we want to uh, implement a link scanner application and uh, so uh, it does the following we want to consider that our application to do to read the web page URL from the user so user input as an input gives a URL and our application fetches the web page and scans the web page for links and stores them in a list. In fact, it fetches all the links that exist in the current web page to other pages. And it notifies the user of the result and asks her if she wants to go through the links. 
and displays a list of these extracted links along with their names. So these five uh, functionality we consider for our application. And in, as in terms of, uh, in the scope of this example, uh, uh, we will explain how to get, take the steps toward implementing this application, designing and implementing this application. So first thing that you should keep in mind is that uh, before starting to implement an application, it's better uh, to, it's always recommended to start with sketching an app mockup, which is in fact just you create the user experience by drawing it and there are tools for actually uh, application mockup because uh, user experience is the most important thing in your application, one of the most important things that um, how user uh, navigates from one uh, screen to another screen and how you put these buttons and how you design your pay, uh, your screens. So here for our application, so we consider these screens that, mm, uh, for example, um, we consider that uh, actually um, the first page will be here uh, that uh, um, uh, actually uh, it tells to the user insert a URL below and we put a button and we consider two scenarios right if uh, the link doesn't exist in case that the link doesn't exist um, it informs it with a notification but in case that it exists it tells the number of links that it founds like here and uh, therefore uh, it puts a OK button if the user put uh, push the OK button then it shows the links and uh, by clicking any link uh, it shows the URL to the user. So this is uh, our vision of our application so we sketch it. And this sketching an app mockup helps you to identify the main activities of your application. So we find two activities here. The first activity uh, has a text box and a button and then it creates a notification with the button. And then the second activity is a uh, scrolling uh, uh, list uh, with a notification. So let's see how to configure this layout uh, in uh, Android Studio. So I will uh, show you in the Android Studio. You can download the source code from the GitHub uh, that is uh, the given in the course webpage uh, for this uh, related to this example. If you want to play with the source code and uh, to take uh, examples. So if you want to configure uh, the uh, layouts and uh, create the UI, uh, let's open the project and um, we call the project is called uh, Link Scanner. Actually, in the app package, you can find all the uh, uh, necessary, uh, all the uh, related uh, uh, files, and actually in the source you can find a package called resources and in the resources there is a uh, package called layout that are uh, all the uh, files that are for defining graphical user interface and as you know there are two um, activities we considered the first activity is where we need to enter uh, we, we ask the user to insert a uh, URL and for that activity uh, we want to 
design its uh, graphical user interface and uh, here in Android Studio it provides you actually uh, a uh, graphical uh, tool uh, that uh, you can use for placing and uh, designing your um, UI uh, where every uh, each of these uh, UI components are in fact uh, translated as a uh, XML tag here uh, where also mm, if you are much uh, easier uh, uh, much more co uh, comfortable with writing uh, source code you can just directly write and uh, design the parameter so as you can see we uh, have defined uh, a, a linear layout that everything comes in uh, uh, rows and uh, actually we have a text view which is uh, for uh, uh, inserting texts uh, and it has a uh, sorry a text view that actually is as a label for showing the text to the user and a text box which in uh, Android terminology is called edit text uh, and a button uh, that actually uh, this button uh, we call it crawl button and later in the body of the activity we define the action for this button and also there is a progress bar uh, which is uh, invisible in the beginning and uh, later we define it to be shown uh, whenever there is a uh, action like user pushes for the button and to show the progress so this is the design of our first activity and uh, you can find the uh, activity you, you you need to define r write uh, java code for your activity and uh, you can find it in the Java and uh, your main uh, activity that we call it here main activity is here so in our uh, main activity uh, we actually uh, uh, as you can see overwrite the onCreate uh, method uh, from the activity class that is inherited from that class and uh, first we say that uh, to, sh uh, to uh, set as a component we this layout and setup activity in the body of the setup activity this is our private method that we have defined here we want to um, actually uh, provide and uh, preset some of the things uh, such as uh, we want to get the uh, reference to some of the um, uh, view components that we have for example we want to have the button and define an action for it as you can see and uh, so we say that uh, for a uh, listener uh, on click listener uh, for this uh, method uh, we define that uh, it actually needs to connect to the website right so it needs to use the connectivity manager uh, uh, for connecting to the network and uh, of course it checks if uh, the network is connected then um, if the network is connected it um, uh actually get the content get the uh, reference uh, to get a reference to the button to the text box uh, edit box or edit text and uh, therefore it set the visibility of the progress uh, bar uh, to uh, it makes the progress bar visible and then uh, here uh, we uh, create a asynchronous task 
for doing the long running task of downloading all the, uh, the, the page uh, content and finding the URL if you remember from the lecture we need to use the uh, worker, thre worker thread to do the long running job and to, the way to do that is async task so as you can see uh, we define a uh, we extend async task and we call it a scan list link and uh, the page link is a class that we defined to just keep the URL and the uh, uh, name of the mm, uh, link you can look at it they are located in the crawler uh, package here link a scanner and page link we already provided it and it's a uh, it link scanner actually extracts uh, all the URLs inter uh, as objects of page link. So uh, that's uh, what it does in the background. So uh, also when it is done. On post execute, we do not directly uh, make uh, in uh, we don't want that uh, worker thread actually uh, touches uh, anything related to the UI components, and uh, it's actually the UI thread that should do that. So uh, here, uh, therefore, we write it in uh, the on post execute uh, of the async task uh, that uh, makes the progress bar invisible after the task is done and therefore there are two scenarios if the link is not fine uh, it notifies with the display links dialog otherwise uh, it creates a alert dialog uh, uh, with a OK button so simple uh, logic but it's demonstrative of uh, and what we want the first activity to do. Uh, now that uh, we have uh, implemented the two scenarios of the link uh, is actually a valid link uh, and if it's not valid, uh, we know that if it's valid uh, the user should be able to by clicking an OK button uh, to have the um, uh, to go to the second activity and how we are going to do that is uh, in the body of the alert dialog that we have defined uh, if you, we scroll down we see that we actually uh, have defined uh, uh, here uh, that uh, um, on create dialog uh, event uh, we actually create a uh, uh, positive button with an action in it uh, which um, if the OK button is pushed uh, it enables uh, it's, uh, it creates an intent which is hard coded that uh, what activity needs to be uh, called with this uh, intent and as you can see we want direct we specifically mention and hard code that we want links activity to be called so it's an explicit way of uh, um, running an activity and, uh, and therefore uh, we uh, uh, put uh, uh, messages and information to be delivered to the next activity by um, calling the put extra of the intent so actually we put the links and then uh, uh, which is an array uh, a list uh, of links and it will be sent uh, when the activity starts to the uh, next activity and also uh, we should uh, know that we need to register activities in Android uh, manifest which is uh, as you can see here uh, therefore we register um, uh, two activities as you can see 
uh, one activity is the main activity which uh, uh, we mention it as a launcher activity also and uh, the second activity which is the links activity and uh, that will be called when it receives an intent uh, from another activity uh, the next activity is uh, the activity that we want uh, to display all the uh, mm, uh, fetched links from the target website or web page. Uh, it's better to say web page. And uh, uh, for that, uh, we have uh, implemented links activity and uh, link item. Link item uh, is actually a layout uh, uh, just uh, with a text view and uh, uh, for this purpose uh, we use uh, for, for its activity actually we uh, use uh, there are different ways of implementing it but one way is uh, to use actually the list activity which is a subclass of the activity class that comes with a list view uh, for that is uh, used for displaying uh, a, data, a set of data received from a data source and as you can see on create uh, uh, we actually uh, can use the get intent that is inherited from the uh, activity class and you can access then uh, to uh, by calling the get serializable extra that we actually piggybacked on this message uh, from the previous activity that is the main activity uh, we can actually have all the links and then uh, we call the method populate list uh, that is actually uh, to uh, get the list view uh, that is inherited from the list activity and uh, then uh, by setting its adapter we can actually uh, give our the, the data uh, to it uh, the set of data and it will display uh, on the list and also we uh, set an item uh, click listener for this uh, that uh, if we implement a uh, listener that we have uh, we want to define well what happens if the user clicks each of the items uh, on this uh, list view and we would like just to show the URL of the each of the links as a uh, toast uh, uh, display that is a, a pop-up display like uh, in uh, Android. I will uh, show this uh, in, in the examples uh, when I run the test. And uh, w well, uh, we we have seen that uh, this application use needs to access uh, network connectivity of the device. So for that purpose, we need permission. So here in Android Manifest uh, file, we need to ask for these two permissions, as you can see. Now uh, we would like to run this application to test it in an end device. And our chosen end device is, for example, Nexus 5 uh, phone. So uh, to run your application direc directly from the Android Studio uh, on an emulated uh, device uh, y you can actually uh, set, uh, you need to enable uh, the ADB integration which in our case it is enabled and after that um, uh, we just need to start the application and since previously we built and created an available a virtual device so uh, there is one here already so we can just uh, create it and it starts and uh, you'll see that uh, when uh, it starts it just directly 
uh, runs the application uh, so here you can see that the application pops up and uh, you can actually uh, use your application um, and test and debug it uh, in a uh, emulated device but a real operating system running an emulated hardware uh, I hope that um, uh, this uh, session could demonstrate to you a, how to implement and start to implement an Android application and uh, thank you so much for attending this lecture